Why aren't production and safety working out of the same office yet? Start with the common ground between safety and production. On this episode, how production and safety can work better together. People work, the human touch in workplace safety. Available everywhere on Amazon. To learn more, go to kevburns.com slash peoplework. Companies associate the success of the operations department with efficiency, productivity, profits. It's easy to measure. Are things getting done? Is there money being made? Are projects being completed? I mean, simple to measure. But in safety, success is determined by a complex formula ending in TRIF rates and with the prevention of occupational injury and illness. It's not as easy to quantify safety success, is it? But both safety and production are important. How do you make these two necessary parts of a company work together if they're not even measuring the same things? Well, production and safety traditionally blame the other for slowing work down. Safety gets compromised when there's a push on for greater production. Operations blame safety for slowing down production. Neither wants to be wrong, both want to be right. You get it. And as a side note, and this needs saying, if you still believe safety holds up production, you're probably in the wrong job. Now, with that said, let's get back to it. Why aren't production and safety measuring success the same way, let alone working out of the same office? And whose bright idea was it to let the two coexist separately? In order for production and safety to work better together, they have to first establish their common ground. What do they have in common? Well, neither side wants to see anyone get hurt, and both sides want the company to have success. That's the common ground. Now, let's build on that. Let's find ways that production and safety can work together. The success of the safety program needs to work with production and operations to move forward. So here are five ways to marry safety and production. Number one, get into the mindset that safety is not something you add to the job. Safety has to be the foundation of everything you do in the job. No one ever got a driver's license before they learned the rules of the road. You can't just add safety to an existing culture and expect that it's going to be smooth sailing. When you assemble a crew, pick your supervisors, train your workers, and then add safety rules after the fact, it won't sustain. You can't hire workers, pick managers, and then complete training without considering safety. Safety needs to be in the hiring interviews, looking for job candidates who already own the safety gene. Then your best advocates for safe production should become your site supervisors. And finally, training has to include safety doing, safely doing the job. You can't add safety to it afterward. The first way to marry production and safety is to get into the mindset that safety is not something you add to the job. Once the mindset's shifted, then let's focus on what you can control. Number two, create a sense of pride in the quality of the work. Look, you can never call it your best effort if you have to cut corners, if you flaunted safety, took unnecessary risks to complete the job. That's not your best effort. If you're doing just enough to look like you're staying busy on your job site, you're not giving your best effort either. If there's still capacity to ramp up and speed up production, then your crew isn't giving their best effort. That's a broken production system. Help people instill a sense of pride in the quality of their work. If you can get, get them to take pride in the job they do, safety becomes part of that pride. If you want to marry production and safety, focus on getting every one of your team to give their best performance. The number two way to start to marry production and safety is to create a sense of pride in the quality of the work. Once you're taking pride in your quality, then move on to the number three way to marry production and safety. Look at the work as a team sport and focus on the moment. How many athletes are thinking of their families when they're pushing for the victory in the final few seconds of the game? Focused players only think about getting the win. They're not thinking about their families, their house, their bank accounts, their iPhone. They're focused on what they're doing in that moment. Thinking about your family while taking a driver's test is distracting. You might as well play with your phone during your driver's test or a certification exam or any sort of dangerous work. So why do you do that in safety meetings? Why do you guilt your people into thinking about their kids and family? Getting your people to focus on their families in safety meetings brings distraction to the job site. When you're in the middle of your best effort, 
You'd better not be thinking about your kids or your family. That's distraction. Any good coach knows that they need to focus their players on getting the team win safely. Athletes focus on nothing but giving their best performance and on getting a team win. Your team should follow this very same process. When everyone gives their best performance, teams get a win. Get your team to the finish line safely, then the end result is that people go home to their families, but only after getting a win. The number three way to marry production and safety, look at the work as a team sport and focus on the moment. And speaking of team sports, the fourth way to marry safety and production is to recognize the difference between being a referee and a coach. Look, referees enforce rules. Coaches improve player skill and productivity within those rules. There's a pretty good chance that by the time an athlete gets to the pro leagues, he already knows the rules. I mean, I can't think of a single sport where the pre-game team meeting is to go over the rules of the game. Rules should have been discussed long ago. But just prior to game time, the coaches take the time to improve motivation and to focus their athletes' performance within the rules. You marry production and safety when you spend less effort being a referee and more time coaching within the rules. That means supervisors need to know the rules of the game, the safety rules, and they've got to be able to motivate and inspire their team to their best performance. The better that coaches can develop players, the better production they're going to get from those players. The fourth way to marry production and safety is to spend more time being a coach and less time being a referee. And once you start to improve your coaching skills, you can move on to the fifth way to marry production and safety by using the safety manual as a playbook. Look at football or hockey. When a team's faced with a certain situation, they run a specific play from their playbook. The playbook's designed to keep you safe and get you a win. Winning teams play the game with meticulousness and attention to detail. If they get behind in the score early, they stick to the game plan. They follow the playbook and execute the plays as they would if they were ahead. Then they trust that the process that got them here this far will get them their win. The fifth way to marry production and safety is to use the safety manual as a playbook. So let's review the five points. Get into the mindset safety is not something you add to the job. Create a sense of pride in the quality of your work. Look at the work as a team sport and focus in the moment. Be more coach, less referee, and use the safety manual as your playbook. Five ways to marry production and safety. And if you're an employee, here's your advice. Trust your coach. Trust the playbook. Trust your team. Trust your ability to give a championship performance in every game.